As Moses stood on the edge of the promised land, knowing that he wouldn't be entering it, he encouraged the Israelites to choose life, to obey and to follow God all their days. And so as we stand on the edge of our promised land, on the community hub or lots of different edges, what choices do we need to make to follow God and to find life in God? The context of our passage in Deuteronomy 30 is at the end of Moses' life. He has led God's people out of slavery in Egypt to the edge of the promised land about 40 years before. And at the time, the people had rejected God's promise and they refused to go on. So an entire generation of rebellious adults all died in the desert, all except for Joshua and Caleb. They were the only ones who urged the people to enter the land. Moses was preparing the people by describing a ceremony that would take place when they entered the promised land. However, Moses didn't want the people to wait until that ceremony to commit themselves to living for God. So he offers this challenge to them to choose immediately, choose God, choose life, choose obedience. And he gives this sermon on the mount. If I asked you how many choices you would make each and every day, how would you answer it? How many choices, how many decisions would you make from when you wake up in the morning to when you go to sleep at night? We are faced with choices all day, every day. Every day we make little choices like what time to get out of bed or what to wear or what to eat, whether we go for a walk on a cold winter's morning or just to stay in bed a little bit longer and so on and so on. We make thousands and thousands of small decisions some consciously and some unconsciously, every day. These decisions can create lifestyle direction and a culture for our life. And then every now and then we have some bigger decisions to make. Might be a career or a job change. It might be where we live. It might be whether we date a person or whether we even marry that person. These can set direction for our future. These are big decisions that have ramifications for the path that we take through life. And then there are the really big decisions in life. These, we don't always make time to, to make these decisions. Choices like what is the meaning of life? What is our purpose? Is there a God and who is God? And how does that change my life? These are big decisions. And the thing is that we will make a decision on these questions at some point. Someone will reflect on these topics and then make a choice to do something about it. Someone else will make a decision to not consider or not to do anything about it in their life. But regardless, we all make a decision in some way, shape or form. I would argue that the decision that we make in this life around whether we will follow God is the single biggest decision that you will ever make. I would also argue that this is a choice that we make every day. I would also argue that the decision impacts this life and the next. Our passage today from Deuteronomy encourages us to make wise choices. I want to suggest that the message that Moses gave on the Mount of Nebo is a statement of faith in God at the, time, at the same time as a call to us all to follow and to obey God. Interestingly, and it's eerie, that this is referenced by Martin Luther King at the end of a sermon titled, I've Been to the Mountaintop, the night before he was uh, shot and killed. This is the final paragraph out of that sermon. Well, I don't know what will happen now. We've got some difficult days ahead, but it doesn't matter with me now because I've been to the mountaintop and I don't mind. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over and I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, 
but I want you to know tonight that we, as a people, will get to the promised land. And I'm happy tonight. And I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. I just love the statements of faith in Moses' sermon and then in Martin Luther King's sermon. And I love the opening verse in Moses' sermon today and where he says that the understanding and the choices that the Israelites needed to make about obeying God were absolutely well and truly within their reach. I want us to focus on two choices that Moses' sermon speaks about. Firstly, in verses 11 to 16, Moses encourages us to make a choice to obey God. Obedience to God over excuses and over disobedience. We see throughout the Bible stories of people's obedience to God bringing great blessings. Noah and his family were saved because of the, his obedience to the Lord. God kept Daniel safe in the lion's den because he chose to obey God. Esther's strength and courage comes when she trusted in God for the salvation of her people. Joseph remained faithful to God despite becoming a slave and a prisoner in Egypt and the blessings for his family. The second choice that Moses speaks about is to choose life and blessings rather than death and curses. In verse 19, Moses says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both you and your descendants may live. When we understand or even experience the ramifications of death and destruction, this is a big and a critical decision to make to choose life and blessing instead. Choosing life or following God does not mean smooth sailing every day, but it does mean that you will have God with you and the support of the spirit and the support of believers. And it does put life into perspective when you realise that Jesus has the victory. If we follow and obey God, we receive eternal life. These choices of obedience to God and, the, and life in God are choices that we need to make each and every day. The word used in verse 20 around that you may love the Lord your God is used as a verb rather than a noun. It is a doing word that requires action. The invitation to hold fast to God, to cling to God, is not to embrace God only in times of crisis but a choice to hold on to with everything you have all the time to God, never letting go, never wanting to be separated from the presence of God in this life or the next, and helping others to discover this reality for themselves personally. We don't live in an Old Testament time like Moses did and the Israelites who lived under the Mosaic laws. And that's the, the moral, the civil or the judicial and the ceremonial laws and the rituals that they lived under. As Moses said, the prophet greater than I will come to fulfill the law and to bring in a new covenant between God and the people into action. The old covenant between God and God's people at that time is gone. And being Easter people, people this side of uh, living post Jesus resurrection, this side of Easter, we now live under the new covenant between God and people. We can only understand and value the new covenant, especially God's grace, by understanding the, un the old covenant. Because of Jesus, we have a personal relationship with our God. We can choose obedience and find life through faith and grace in Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Saviour. So the only question for us is a simple one, but it's a big one. What do you choose? 